Apparently, being an ant is extremely hard. What's good, everybody? How we doing? We are back with some more casual geographic, and this is the traumatizing reality of being an ant. Let's check it out. Of all the places to jump for the ant. Life kind of sucks. Don't get me wrong, the gift of life is a beautiful thing and all that, but then again, none of us really asked to be here, and then one day you gain consciousness, minor character development followed, and before you could blink twice, you got student loans, a job, and taxes. <laughs> all that aside, though, it we hits fast. Have it pretty good. I mean, we could be ants, because in the game of life, ants have some of the most creatively cruel game overs of any animal. I'm sure. To be fair, ants do have a lot going for them. They take the whole strength in numbers thing and put it on steroids, oh, gosh. resulting in a eusocial insect able to weaponize its community to take down threats hundreds of times its size, like an angry Twitter mob. The all for one mentality <laughs> is how ants have managed to stay in the game for well over 100 million years, with today over 12,000 flavors of them seasoning virtually every part of the earth that is in Antarctica. The problem with being so ancient is that your neighbors have had that much time to evolve around your existence, which often involves using the ants' own habits and traits against them, and trust me, you're gonna see just how ridiculous some animals got with it. Plenty of animals' grocery lists have ants on it. It'd be virtually impossible to list all of them, but here are some of the most memorable for us and traumatizing for the ants. This for example, this itchy. is an ant graveyard, and most ants don't find out till it's too late. That's because the ant line is the equivalent of a Call of Duty camper that digs a funnel-shaped crater in the sand and then hides in the center of it, completely invisible to the rest of the world. Oh my gosh. All it takes is one ant to step into the death trap to get sent sliding into the center. Oh. And with the shifting sands and the ant line tracking the ant through vibrations and actively flicking up sand, the harder the ant tries to struggle, the further it slides into the pit oh. directly into the snare trap jaws <laughs> and considering some ant lions can spend years in a stakeout once they do grab the ant they waste little time injecting it with venom to paralyze it along with enzymes to digest it from the literal inside out which what a way to die for the ant that's got to be terrifying because you're sitting there trying to struggle and get out of the sand pit and you have this fucking beast of an insect trying to poison you and eat you jesus christ which is when the ant gets its actual life essence sucked from it by the ant lion drinking its liquefied insides. Whoa. And once the ant serves no further purpose, the ant lion yeets the violated corpse out the trap like an empty Capri Sun and then goes back into its homicide hovel to wait to feed on the next ant's mistake. So disrespectful. If that process sounds familiar. It's cuz this is bar for bar what the Sarlacc pit from Star Wars was inspired by. Oh. The worst part is, even if the ant manages to struggle up one side of the pit, real life Jabba will throw up sand from the center, causing the sand around it to collapse, along with the meal prepped ant with it. Bro. The camping tremor isn't the ant's only paralysis demon. A Canthaspis patax is an assassin bug that also murks anything ant for a uh, what? Like the ant line, that involves administering tissue melting toxins and then slurping the life out of it. Wait, tissue melting toxins? Damn nature, you scary! But they don't just toss out the used and abused ant carcass when they're done. The nymph gathers the soul evacuated bodies of its victims and then wears it like a jacket. This oh. corpse coat helps the assassin bug carry on its ant onslaught while camouflaging it so it too doesn't get put on a t-shirt. This is the first example of what I said about animals using the ant's habits against them. The spiders that the nymph normally would have to worry about also don't want smoke with an angry ant mafia. So scientists believe that cosplaying as an ant army keeps the underage assassin bug alive long enough to reach its adult form. When they wow. don't need a carcass scarf to survive. But it also means that an ant's entire existence can really come down to being a part of some assassin's ensemble. I only listed two. It gets so much worse. Ford it flies does? are one of the biggest ops to an ant's pursuit of happiness, to the point where the United States tried to weaponize the flies against them. The nightmare starts when a forward fly, which can be easily mistaken for a fruit fly, penetrates the thorax of the ant and then leaves behind an egg and then just takes off like only a destructive <laughs> dead bee can. This oh. doesn't kill the ant, but the events that follow make it wish it did. Because once the egg hatches, it migrates to the ant's head where it begins eating it from the inside. Oh! The ant is alive for all this, but seemingly goes into a catatonic state. After a couple weeks, we're basically talking about a zombie ant getting its vessel carjacked by the fly. Oh my That's god! That's not hyperbole. The larva devours the ant's brain in its last chance of free will and then forces a self-imprisoned ant to just wander around aimlessly. Eventually, the larva manages to guide the ant to its ideal nursery grounds, that being some leaf litter or a crack in the soil. Ah, uh, this video is really making me uneasy. <laughs> I mean, it's no surprise that an ant's life is pretty hard, but all this extra stuff that happens to it, like insects laying eggs and hatches in its head, but throughout the whole process, it's putting the ant into a zombie-like state and it eats it from the inside out? 
Damn! And in its final act, and after weeks of pretty much being locked in the sunken place, the ant's head literally divorces the rest of its body as the felony fly larva spits out enzymes that destroy the very membranes keeping the head and body together. It spends a little more time using the disembodied head as a crib before it pupates and crawls out the long past tense ant's mouth. Oh. It's a fate that would violate the Geneva Convention, but since insects have very little rights, the United States have been trying to use forward flies in the fight against fire ants. I just want to say, we are so lucky that we are not as small as ants. We would have to deal with all of the ants' enemies. And I'm not getting killed by some stupid fly that wants to eat me from the inside out. That's not happening, man. Fire ants that were accidentally Ubered into the American Southwest in the 1930s from Brazil and have proceeded God, to spread more me the TikTok trend. So scientists have imported forward flies as the most brutal form of population control for the fire ants that really didn't ask to be here in the first place. And apparently, the flies only subtract a small portion of the fire ants, but the threat of them drastically disrupts the colony's activities and forces them to retreat underground. To be mm. fair, you'd be a whole lot less productive if you witnessed your neighbor's head fall off and a whole alien crawl out. On uh, one yeah. hand, weaponizing flies is probably less destructive than mass breezing pesticides like like DDT. But on the other, playing God with a mind-controlling, brain-eating parasite can't possibly have a good ending. But either way, it's another example of an animal that's tailored its entire existence around griefing ants. And it's not the only fly that's learned how to hoe ants for a living. <laughs> ants do this thing where they actually hold on a second. Okay, we're good. Ants <laughs> often do this thing where they'll feed another ant by regurgitating into the mouth of the receiver. Oh! Yeah, it's nasty nasty, but not only are they sharing food, but ants like carpenter ants transfer proteins to help boost disease resistance and overall colony immunity. Enter the flies. One species of South African fly figured out the signal one ant will use on its donor to initiate the food transfer. So the flies come in and use the signal, touching the mouth region of the ant, to force it to give up its food. What? And as smart as they allegedly are, the ants aren't smart enough to realize they're getting fleeced out of food by a fly. Which is probably how they got the nickname, the ant mugging fly. Like I said, oh. hundreds of millions of years is a lot of time for your ops to study your playbook and use it against you. Because when ants aren't getting trapped door by ant lions, finessed by flies, or turned into a light flex by an assassin, Jeez. ants are often the victim of some of the most complex manipulation in the entire animal It team. looks like One it. example is how this entire butterfly's existence depends solely on deceiving ants. The <laughs> Alcon blue butterfly has no weapons, no venom, no armor at all. But what they do have are pheromones that are almost identical to that produced by ant larvae. So when oh. the caterpillar air drops itself down to the forest floor, it's almost immediately taken in by a colony of ants. Oh. By mimicking the ant equivalent of a new baby smell, the caterpillar manages to get VIP treatment from the same ants that could turn it into coffin stuffing. The ants carry it into their nest where they feed the caterpillar like one of their own. To the oh. point where if there's ever a food shortage, the intruder manages to savvy its way into getting priority over their actual young. Oh. Especially since the caterpillar is able to mimic the sound the ant queen makes in order to get more attention. And I get that it took millions of wow. years of trial and error to get it right. That is some wild commitment. It is! The Alcon maintains the fraud for two years until one day it pupates and flies out the ant nursery with the ants unaware of just how hard they got played. It almost happened in that last frame, but it would really suck if the caterpillar did all of that just to get killed by the ants when he's leaving his cocoon and he's a butterfly. That would really suck. <laughs> <laughs> this game plan works out so well for the butterfly that even one of the slowest animals on earth takes a cue from them and pulls a fast one on ants. Ants wow. love eating snail slime. I want you to remember that piece of information. It's going to be real important later. Why? One species of snail will purposely secrete slime in order to attract the ants who kidnap it and carry it into their nest. Since what? most ants will 100% eat a snail alive, at first this looks like self-subtraction with extra steps. But once carried <laughs> into the ant fortress, the snail suddenly stops releasing the slime that got it there in the first place. And somehow not being seen as food gives the snail diplomatic immunity, and they're able to move around the nest untouched and even feed on the groceries the ants bring in while contributing a total of nothing. But at least with the Alcon <laughs> Blue and the snail, technically no one really gets hurt. But one animal manages to not only completely manipulate its ant mark, it does it in one of the most ridiculously complicated ways possible. Go get a snack if you don't have one. This finna be a novel. The jihad starts with a parasitic flatworm that enslaves the ant through mind control. You see the pattern here, right? What? Completely against its will, the ant is forced by the flatworm shacking up in its brain to climb up a flower or stem and clamp its jaws around the tip of the stem where it can wait for up to two months. Wait for what exactly? Basically for an animal that eats grass to come in and take the zombie ant with it. End what? of the road for the ant, but the parasite manages to make its way into the liver of its new host. Which is probably why the flatworm is called the liver fluke. And if you think getting lodged inside a cow's liver is a dead end, then you must not have believed me when I told you how needlessly complicated this stuff gets. While feeding on whatever cow, sheep, or rabbit unintentionally murked the ant, the fluke lays eggs that then get deuced out by the same host. Those eggs don't get to hatch until a snail comes along and eats the droppings, along with the eggs in them. What? And it's while getting taxied by host number three that the eggs hatch and proceed to irritate the snail to the point where they get ejected, along with a good amount of snail slime. Ugh. Remember what I said about snail snot and who likes to eat it? And it's once an ant feeds on the contaminated, parasite-loaded goop that 
this vicious cycle restarts. Oh. Pretty much the liver fluke's life cycle looks more like a family guy cutaway. But instead of Meg, the biggest casualty in all of this is an ant that thought it scored an easy meal, but instead gets turned into an easy lick. And I know what you're <laughs> thinking, and yes, there's a fungus that does the exact same thing. Ants live through The Last of Us firsthand when a cordyceps fungus infects an ant, robs it of its life choices, and then forces its new vessel to climb up high enough until it makes it clamp its vice grip jaws around a stem, and then it just stands there waiting for the sweet release of perma sleep. And once what? the ant becomes a was, its withered body becomes ground zero as the fungus proceeds to explode out of it, with the fruiting body growing out of the decommissioned ant's head. And from there, it spits out spores in order to continue the cycle of completely. I had no idea ants were getting body like this, man desecrating the ant's way of life. So as you can see, there are many obstacles to an ant's very what? existence. Taxes don't seem too bad now, huh? But by far <laughs> the biggest threat to ant survival are other ants. Ants regularly oh. commit acts of war against other colonies, and the outcome is just as horrific as you'd think. Apart from the mass slaughterings, ants regularly participate in slavery. When ants like the Red what? Formica raid enemy nests, it's not enough for them to red rum any adults that try to slow them down. They'll make off with as much of the victim colony's larvae as possible. In a season, they can abduct thousands. Back at the kidnapper's home base, the stolen children are born with no way of knowing how they got there and are conditioned to serve the colony that massacred their family. What? The kidnapped are made to do tasks such as maintain the nest, go out and search for food, and even look after the next generation of baby snatchers. They'll even do that weird food transfer vomity thing I told you about to feed their own captors. But don't think for a second that the kidnappers get off scot-free. Oh. Eventually, the enslaved turn on their kidnappers by hitting them where it hurts the most. A good number of the slave maker and pupae get murked by the same slave workers that were supposed to be looking after them. This get back can delete more than half the colony's children before they finish the pupil stage and become adults. Oh and in some cases, up to two thirds of the slaver's offspring get relieved from life. I've made this joke before, but that's Django Unchained levels of get For back, real! Which is why another ant figured out a safer way of griefing their ops. The Solenopsis de Guerri of South America is another oh, ant whose queen will infiltrate the nest of- I'm uncomfortable! This is making me so fucking uncomfortable, bro. For example, red fire ants. And instead of immediately turning oh, the queen hashtag, the parasite instead steals the food intended for her, which pretty much kills the actual queen slowly. And while that's happening, the parasite queen starts spawning eggs, which the workers unknowingly take care of. And once her children are developed and ready, they fly off like a virus to infect even more colonies. The Solenopsis is such a menace that, just like with Ford flies, this parasite has been used to nerf the red fire ants that have become invasive in some places. Wait, 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 and is that somebody's hand? Because that's making me feel some type of way. At this point, it's pretty clear that the ant's entire purpose is to serve the colony, and by extension, the queen. This means that some ants have essentially sold their souls for the ant kingdom's best interests. Soldier ants are so geared for war and nothing else that they physically can't feed themselves, and without worker ants to mama bird them, they'd starve. The cephalos wow. spent evolution points on a head wide enough to block entrances to their nest from intruders. Pretty dope until you realize their entire life's purpose comes down to just being a living door. <laughs> All this to protect the queen who would 100% throw her colony under the bus if it benefits her. That's not speaking wow. hypothetically either. Queen ants have been known to backdoor their own colony. Many ant colonies have more than one queen, which on paper should be a good thing since more queens means more workers means better chance for the colony to prosper. Right. The problem is the small but very real chance that the workers turn on the extra queens and take them out of power. Permanently. Queen ants Word? seem to know this, so sometimes they'll try to be slick and purposely produce less eggs so that they can save their energy fighting off any disobedient subordinates if it ever gets to that point. Damn. The caveat is producing less eggs and therefore less workers actually hurts the colony overall, even if it helps the one queen. The problem is, the workers know it, and they can sense how fertile a queen is based on chemicals. So if the worker ants suspect that one of the queens is holding out on them, it's curtains for her. Ant for politics real? means if the ant queen gets too selfish, she gets executed. But become too much of a team player with other queens in power, and the queen ant becomes completely defenseless in the case of a mutant. Since the well, I mean, you're damn if you do, you damn if you don't, man. For one, I never knew ants would actually turn on their queen like that. But, the queen knows that somebody might try her one day so she produces less eggs then they know that she produced less eggs and if she's not producing enough eggs then they offer oh my gosh the process of making so many eggs means she doesn't have any energy left to defend herself. But no ant pays a higher price for being a team player than a species found in Southeast Asia. These ants oh, don't have huge mandibles or stingers, but when their colony is under attack, oh, then you God. see exactly why they were named Colobopsis Explodents. Oh, they have huge glands under their abdomen, oh, and as a last resort, they'll force oh, the glands to burst and cause oh, themselves to explode. Oh, this God. act of self suppression oh, coats the enemy in this toxic, oh, sticky, glue-like gunk that traps the attackers while also poisoning them. The ants kamikaze oh, themselves, but they do it for the good of the colony. 
And this isn't even the only way ants will voluntarily cross themselves off the census. There's a species of Brazilian ant that'll seal the entrance to their nest every night to keep possible threats out. Ugh. The problem is, they use actual living ants to close the entrance from the outside. And with no way to get back in, a few brave worker ants spend the night outside the safety of the nest, and become past tense by the time the nest is opened again in the morning. But at least when these ants sign their own obituary, it's by choice and for a purpose. There is no choice or purpose to what's happening here. Two things to know about army ants. Number one, they're nomads. They they don't make a permanent settle down nest and are That's constantly some big on ass ants. Number two is that oh. army ants are essentially blind. They rely on pheromones. Uh. An ant mill like this happens when a small. I don't know what it is, but like seeing like an ant up close is fucking terrifying for me. I can't stand what they look like up close, man. Party of ants get separated Ugh. from the rest of the foraging group, and while lost, they begin to start following each other. And with no way of knowing they're going in an endless circle, you see exactly why this has been called the death spiral. Oh, they just keep going until they eventually pass tense to pure exhaustion. And not all ant mills are this small. One of the first death spirals ever seen was about 1,200 feet across. For the non-Americans, that's about 365 meters, and for the Americans with no concept of distance like me, that's more than three <laughs> football fields, and apparently it took each ant two and a half hours just to complete one lap. And out of wow. all the disturbing ways ants get logged out of life, this might be the worst one. Mindlessly marching in a circle, blindly following the guy in front of you until your number eventually gets called. Yeah, it's the worst one because for some people, it's the most relatable. And on that note, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you go outside uh. and do something you wouldn't normally do. Break out of the rut any chance you can. Because the thing about a death spiral is, you may not realize you're in it until it's too late. See you on the next one. Mm. Wow. Um... That video was uh, informative. But I was not prepared for how disturbing that video was. Oh, God. I don't know what it is about seeing an ant's face, but it looks like some type of alien or some demon. It's so creepy. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed my reaction, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you share and subscribe. Make sure you support Casual Geographic, and I'll be back with some more reactions. Peace!